Hello everyone, and welcome to this new video tutorial for Maverick Render. In this video tutorial we will explore all the improvements we've made in Maverick's Shadow Catcher for our latest release. The easiest way to use a Shadow Catcher is to go to the floor section in the objects library. By dropping one of these to our scene a floor with a Shadow Catcher is automatically created under our model. We may select it to reveal its attributes. The main improvement we've made in the Shadow Catcher node is the way in which reflections are rendered. Now we will be able to achieve true mirror-like reflections by increasing the weight and lowering the roughness. Let's drop a backplate from the library. Mirror-like reflections are still there and they can be configured easily and intuitively. Let's discover more new features. The indirect reflection toggle makes the floor be reflective in indirect illumination. This turns mutual reflection between the floor and our objects on and off. This is unwanted more often than not, so the toggle is disabled by default. A very interesting new feature is what we have called region of interest. With the ROI we may constrain the shadow catcher shadows and reflection to an elliptical region. Let's see how it works by enabling effect shadows, effect reflection, and the show clipping overlay. Show clipping reveals the boundaries of the region of interest so we can adjust it with a hard visual reference. The center of the ROI is the pivot of the object the shadow catcher is applied to. So you can move it around with the move tool. We will find more interesting functionality in the extended rollups of the shadow catcher node. In the global illumination rollup we will find override controls for color and intensity. These control the GI that the shadow catcher casts back to our objects. This is extremely useful when we are working with a pitch black ambience. Let's see how by dropping one. All black ambiences in our library come with a GI override pre-configured. This casts gray GI despite the floor is black in direct vision. Otherwise reflections in the model would be completely killed off, which is most likely not what we want. Next we will work on a practical shadow catcher example. We will use a Sketchfab model which link you will find in the description box below. Our ambiences library has been remade, taking advantage in most entries of the new shadow catcher. Let's drop some of them and see what they look like. In order to easily change the backplate color, just click on an empty spot in the IPR or go to the IBL node in the lights panel. Neutral backgrounds like these are ideal for product photography, as they provide a consistent way to adjust lighting while keeping the backdrop constant. Let's now fine tune some shadow catcher fatches a bit. Let's increase the reflection weight and lower the roughness. Let's enable the region of interest to constrain the effect, making sure that the disk stays within the frame. In this case we need a larger radius that matches the size of our model. Let's find values that we are happy with. Finally, let's see the improvements that the new shadow catcher node has brought to the render set system. Let's enable render sets in the compositing panel and make sure that the object IDs list is set to all. In the render panel we will configure the out resolution and the target sampling. We want a quick render so we will lower the sampling level to 9 and enable the AI denoiser. Let's configure the output path and choose PSD for our render sets. We start the render and wait for completion. As we can see, the sequence of layers needed by the render sets feature is computed. Once the renders are done, 
we will open the output file, which will take us to Photoshop. Now the scene reflection and its shadows are perfectly detached into separate layers. But unlike in the past, they embed proper alpha channel now. This way you will be able to change the background and have proper shadows and reflection at all times. Another very interesting improvement is that the composite PNG that render sets generate as a byproduct features the scene reflection and shadows with proper alpha as well. If we drop this PNG on top of any background, like we would when doing website design, the model and its shadows and reflection will blend perfectly. The fact that shadows and reflection are burned with their alpha in the output PNG greatly simplifies compositing. This is all for now. See you in the next video. Have fun rendering with Maverick.